Hello and welcome to UC Today. My name is Kieran Devlin and today's session is Critically Upholding Digital Communications Governments in UC. I am delighted to be joined by Garth Landers, Director of Global Product Marketing at Theta Lake. Garth, thanks for joining us. Hi, Kieran. Thanks for having us. Before we explore exactly what digital communications governments is and why it's important for UC, please tell us a little bit about yourself, Garth, and your journey with Thetalik. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, as you mentioned, I'm Garth Landers. I'm responsible for product marketing at Theta Lake, and I've spent the majority of my career advising um, organizations, both in the public and private sector, um, about compliance technologies and the evolution of them uh, over the last 20 years, both as an industry analyst and as a vendor. Um, Theta Lake is a pioneer in our topic today of digital communications governance having started in 2017, uh, Theta Lake was created with the intention of providing compliance and security for unified communications and uh, built from the ground up, no sort of legacy infrastructure um, that was built for email or other you know, communications technologies, really designed with unified communications in mind, especially as organizations adapt and adopt those uh, those different communications channels. Uh, we're led by a very experienced team, uh, executive team that has done this before in terms of building uh, companies from the ground up and executing successfully. And uh, today we serve some of the largest, uh, most highly regulated, particularly in financial services, uh, firms in the world today across the globe. So they use us so that they can adopt uh, those unified communications safely and compliantly. Perfect. Well, moving on to the topic at hand, please tell us what exactly is digital communications governance and why is it important for UC? Yeah, so digital communications governance is a term and a market that was defined by Gartner last year. Um, it's really the idea that there need to be solutions that provide uh, methods to monitor and enforce corporate governance and regulatory compliance across the growing number of uh, communications channels that organizations are adopting today, including unified communications. So the way that they do that is they apply policy management. Um, they enforce it through reporting capabilities and visibility. Um, they provide record keeping uh, capabilities through data retention and systematic archival of all of these different communications. Um, ideally, you know, they're going to provide surveillance and supervision capabilities that can identify risk proactively, which is something Theta Lake excels at, and uh, provide things like behavioral analytics and auditing and e-discovery for firms that have to respond to litigation. So, you know, Gartner created this market in mind last year with the idea that, you know, there's a growing array of video, text, voice, and mobile communications, and, you know, compliance needs to address those. Perfect. Well, I think you outlined uh, at the start of your answer there about how this was almost a definition that Gartner um, put together um, recently. But is this a new market or is it an evolution of an older one? Haven't we always had a need for compliant communications? Absolutely. A great question. And yes, of course, um, things like email archiving have been with us, you know, for the greater part of 30 years. And of course, you know, voice communications, which, you know, are part of unified communications and collaboration. There's been compliance there for some time as well. Um, this is a evolution, right? So Gartner used to have a market called enterprise information archiving that was largely focused on email and textual communications like instant messaging compliance. So they recognize the need that, you know, our communications channels have evolved. I think if you talk to uh, young folks, you know, an email might seem quaint or a relic. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's still widely used, but not, you know, it's not growing um, as much as these other channels are. And so Gartner recognized the need to address that. And I think also that those legacy approaches um, don't really fit, you know, today's communications model. So there's some gaps, you know, if you try to take an email archiving tool and apply it to today's modern communications. 
you know, for one, they're going to, uh, those types of archives, those types of compliance platforms are going to view everything as an email and try to, in fact, render it as such. And they may not be capable of st storing things like video natively or incorporating voice or all of these different meeting elements that we use today. And does Gardner advise on what's important when planning and considering digital communications governance? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think Gartner in their research really points out that the trend is towards SaaS-based offerings, you know, cloud-based offerings like Theta Lake that can support a number of communications channels, right? Because we don't do, you know, we don't typically use one or two now. We're using a half dozen um, or a dozen at any one time to communicate. Um, they recommend that, you know, these are platforms that can leverage artificial intelligence and their analytics because scalability is really important. And they make a particular point of emphasizing that archiving is indeed very important, that record keeping, you know, in which we saw a lot of a number, a numerous amount of fines in the last couple of years, you know, headline grabbing fines, particularly in financial services where there was poor record keeping and there was not accountability around that archiving process. So Gartner does emphasize the archiving component and not just connecting to um, platforms and connecting, you know, content, but also taking hold and managing that record keeping process. They do outline seven, dif seven different um, use cases, you know, from archiving to including investigation. So search is very important, analytics, um, compli compliance policy enforcement, uh, which is what this is all about. And they note that, you know, there's a gravital, a gravital pull uh, towards financial services, which is a heavily regulated industry, and often at the forefront of unified communications adoption as they look to, you know, um, use that as a competitive advantage. And I think it's interesting what you touch on there about the record number of fines, and it's almost because UC has become so expansive now, it leverages so many different mediums that has been integrated in across various platforms, chat, voice, video, a lot of fresh challenges that organizations face in 2024 to look and govern this content. What are some of the challenges that you're really noticing now in 2024? Yeah, well, firms are really struggling with a few different things, right? Um, they're making the transition to the cloud when they adopt things like cloud voice and other channels. And as I mentioned, there's you know, those challenges of the legacy platforms or previous investments, we're, we're not necessarily denigrating them, but those previous investments that were just oriented towards different communication types like email, or maybe they were silos just for voice. So, you know, they're grappling with those gaps and technical challenges that come with adopting uh, unified communications. And then be, they know that compliance is important <clears throat> And, you know, in fact, what they're finding is that oftentimes compliance is telling UT, UC stakeholders, hold off, wait, we really can't adopt these new channels because, um, you know, we're not sure we can compliantly use them. We're not sure we can monitor them. We're not sure we can identify risk. And there's just an enormous amount of content in terms of volume and complexity that often, you know, causes compliance teams to really hesitate. and. Um, you know, actually ask that some features be turned off. So we have found in our research, we do a annual uh, digital communications governance study of over 600 financial services, um, IT and compliance personnel. And we find that roughly three quarters of those firms are saying, hold off, pump the brakes. We can't adopt new features and functionality until we know for sure that we can do it, do so compliantly. So they're investing in unified communications and they're not maximizing all of the functionality. So that volume of content and that complexity of content is often at the forefront of it. I think the other thing that we see with our customers and prospects is that in addition to the volume, that complexity piece really speaks to the meshed nature of UC applications. You can be in a Zoom, you know, uh, in a Slack uh, dialogue, for example, and open up Zoom, right? There's 
numerous cases where content is meshed across different platforms. And from a compliance standpoint, it can be really challenging to understand and follow the conversation flow and be able to search um, for potential risk and violations of policy, you know, across a multimodal conversation that may start out with video and then go to SMS and end in an audio call or incorporate chat and take place over many days and weeks. So compliance teams struggle with that. And then I think the last thing that we see as a challenge um, when you look at all of these different modalities is that it's not one size fits all. You know, when we say something like cloud voice, um, we're talking about something that is, you know, independent of device or network. So it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. And if you look at, you know, a, a market like the cloud voice market, we're talking about numerous use cases. You know, we could be talking about contact, contact center compliance. We could talk about business users that are using Zoom phone or Ring Central SMS. We could be talking about heavily regulated broker dealers that are using mobile applications. You know, all of these users, um, and there's a number of them, a number of use cases, are also using different applications. They're not using one application just to do voice. Now, multiply that across all of the modalities, and you can see why, you know, compliance teams may bulk and see this as a, uh, a very uh, uh, large challenge. And I guess moving on to specifically more on the theta like side of things, you know, you, you outlined what Gartner suggested were digital communications governance, what their definitions were, and what they believe is important in planning and considering DCG to, to use its acronym. But what does Theta Lake believe is important in DCG planning? Yes, uh, thank you. So Theta Lake believes that a number of things are, are really important when it comes to digital communications governance considerations. Um, one, I think, you know, that we really need to look at, if you're looking at this from a, uh, a long-term perspective, and hopefully you are, um, you know, compliance is not what your primary function is, right? It's something that is necessary, is crucial, but you want it to take place in the background and you want it to be something that's highly repeatable. So, you know, the, the aspect of being future proof and being able to support a number of modalities and different platform types and use cases is really important. You know, organizations today, when they talk about, you know, supporting all of these multimodal, numerous UC and collaboration platforms in their organization, and it's not just limited to UC and collaboration. It could be work management, right? It could be things like Asana and, you know, Monday.com and all of these different sort of other platforms that incorporate collaboration as well. Um, they're not, they're looking for something that, you know, will allow them to adopt those, use those platforms and do so in a way that, you know, doesn't require them to have to reorient and build and continually um, upgrade, right? Something that can support a, a number of modalities. Um, that repeatability is really important. Again, you know, there, if you look at this from a UC stakeholder, um, you know, someone that owns a Microsoft Teams or a Zoom or a Cisco WebEx or a Ring Central in the organization, their primary goal is really to make sure that users are empowered and engaged and maximizing all of that functionality. So, you know, when they adopt, when they uh, implement a compliance platform like Theta Lake so that users can do that, they want something that's highly repeatable, that doesn't cause a lot of friction, that doesn't, you know, require a lot of um, rollout and implementation time, that seamlessly integrates with those UC platforms. Um, in addition, I think, you know, that future proof aspect is really important when you consider that UC platforms are continually developing, continually updating and providing new features and functions. So, for example, you know, if you look at a Microsoft Teams or a Zoom for um, they might be rolling out, you know, dozens of updates on a quarterly basis and hundreds of updates, you know, nearly 100 updates 
70, 80, you know, type of functional updates over the course of the year. And you're adopting those features many times, you know, you're not fully aware of what you're, you're taking on. Um, and from a compliance standpoint, there could be gaps. Now, someone like Theta Lake, you know, partners works with those platforms. And in fact, many of them are leading investors in Theta Lake and keeps pace with that continuous development so that there aren't ever any uh, coverage gaps for compliance. Last couple of things I'd say that are really important here are um, infrastructure flexibility. Again, you know, when you look at this from a um, implementation standpoint, taking advantage of all of the resources that an organization has, they may not, not necessarily want another archive. They may have an archive in place. And so you want a vendor like Theta Lake that can support existing archive investments, will allow you to bring your own storage, will give you the choices of AWS or Azure, um, or, you know, gives you that, that SEC 17A4 archive like Theta Lake so that, you know, you may want to, you may want to keep it all in one vendor, but that infrastructure flexibility is really important and something that when we look at predecessor markets like email archiving was never really offered, right? It was always sort of a black box where content was in some cases held hostage. And unfortunately that still happens where the vendor owns the data and the, uh, the end user customer does not. So those are the types of things you want to look for as you start to look for a future proof a partner for digital communications governance. And I guess moving on to the role of the buzzword of 2023, uh, but one that's maybe uh, developed and evolved this year, AI. You know, it's it's the word that's been on everyone's lips for almost two years now. And we hear so much in terms of bots, generative AI, transcription. What does Theta Lake think about the role of AI in DCG? Yes, thank you. So there's a couple of ways of looking at artificial intelligence. There's certainly how we use it in our in our offerings. And we do provide machine learning and natural language processing based risk detections, um, over 85 of them really out of the box that are, you know, pre made and allow organizations to apply, you know, what we'll call artificial intelligence to identify risk with a minimum of human involvement but obviously human uh, uh, oversight. Um, that's one example of how we use artificial intelligence. But there's also, to your point, I think, um, how organizations are adopting things like generative AI in the organization. And, you know, in that case, um, what we do is provide guardrails. So, for example, um, if, you're, if you are, um, you know, looking at from a risk detection standpoint, how are organization? How is our organization, you know, using Chat G GPT or some other large language model? You know, maybe that's a concern. Um, we could detect the URL if you if a user put that in a chat, for example, and you know, identify that as an, uh, a case where yeah, someone's talking about using Chat GPT or they're potentially using it. And we want to be aware of that, right? That would be you know, one, one sort of smaller example. Other examples might be generative AI is used in things like meeting summaries today. Zoom AI companion is tremendously useful, right? When we have a meeting, we often want to, you know, understand what took place. Maybe we didn't attend it. You know, people's note-taking capabilities, it's hard to keep pace. You might be sharing a screen. Zoom AI companion um, does all of that, right? It uses generative AI to say, here's what took place, who's, here's who was in it, here are the takeaways, here's the next action steps. Great. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe that's something that you're using and turning on. But from a compliance standpoint, in areas like financial services, you know, that might be considered electronic communications that needs to be retained for record keeping and risk detection, you know, supervision purposes, um, we do that. So we capture that meeting summary and incorporate it into the whole meeting record so that it's auditable, you know, it's 
it's um, identified and linked with the meeting itself and the participants and the time and all of those things and of course searchable so you know though that's an example other examples of ai you know might be related to co-pilot usage for example again you know using generative ai in your organization there's a number of capabilities and policy settings numerous that come out with you know a tool like copilot and so you might want some sort of policy enforcement and some sort of visibility about how you're using copilot today because things get switched on again new features are introduced all of the time you know dozens and dozens as we talked about on an incremental basis and you may want some top-down control just in terms of policy enforcement and consistency of how you're using generative ai in your organization today Beta Lake does that, of course. And one final question before I let you go, Garth. There is the, the, the rise of mobile communications, and we've heard a lot of news about non-compliant communications and very large fines being levied against banks, specifically around the use of mobile comms. Does DCG address this? What should firms do? Yeah, we... We, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't address that, right? That's sort of the elephant in the room. And as you said, uh, some $2.6 billion in fines over the last two years in financial services, largely for two categories. Um, one is uh, unsupervised communications and the other is you know, inadequate record keeping. So when it comes to unsupervised communications um, and you know, sort of the mobile best practices that are out there, um, it's not one size fits all. And we've got some uh, guidance coming out on this. We encourage people to take a look at a paper that we have coming out um, called the Top 5 Mobile DCG Best, ba Best Practices. And, you know, a summary of some of those are, again, you know, it's both policy, visibility, and technology, right? So, you know, you, you really want to categorize the compliance needs and scenarios by employee type because, again, much like we talked about earlier in our voice example, it's not one size fits all. And employees fall into different categories in terms of their communication needs, how they work, where they're located, the geography they're located in and such. And then it's, you know, you start to consider the pros and cons of different technology implementations, you know, corporate owned devices, BYOD approaches, you know, hybrid options where people have, you know, maybe two devices, what are the pros and cons of those, right? So you're sort of forming a matrix at this point. And then, you know, across the employee types and device approaches, we always want to really leverage and maximize those unified communication platforms because they have, um, you know, native voice capabilities. They have additive voice capabilities when you talk about things like Zoom phone, Cisco WebEx calling, Ring Central. You know, all of them have integrated voice and mobile features. And what you want to do there is you really want to encourage and provide tools that employees are going to use so that they're less likely to go off channel and use things that are not supervised and that are not sanctioned by the organization. You really want to give employees those choice. So maximize the usage of those where possible. There's a couple of other things you can do too in terms of best practices, you know, across the employee types and device approaches and UCC tools, um, you know, you want to enable carrier level integrations and things where you're working with your corporate network provider, where you can implement tools like Theta Lake behind the scenes to capture those SMS messages or, you know, voice calls. And again, doing it really transparently and behind the scenes so that you're not interfering, you're not creating friction for end users. I think that's really important in all of this guidance is that the more friction you provide, meaning the more steps and layers that compliance implements and prevent people from getting to their primary goal, which is communicating, they're going to go off channel. They're going to choose and look at frictionless alternatives. And in many cases, they're not trying to do, they're not looking to do the wrong thing. They're doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. They just want to communicate. So make sure you're taking an approach that doesn't apply a lot of friction and interference. You know, working with network carrier-based approach, UCC tools, 
um, are, you know, things that you can do that will encourage productivity, but also, you know, partnering with someone like Theta Lake will also, you know, give you that blanket coverage regardless of um, use case, you know, device type, um, platform, and such, and provide that frictionless experience so that users are productive, but also compliant. Brilliant. Well, I think that's a really optimistic note in which to end today's interview. But uh, thank you for your time, Garth. This has been a really good session. Great. Thank you, Kieran. Thanks for having us. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share on social media, and we'll see you next time. I've been Kieran Delvin of UC Today. Thanks for watching.